Hello everyone. Have you ever had that moment of completing something but not being able to remember how you started it? Well, this assignment is going to be much like a maze where you go get in but you don't know how you're going to get out. Your task is to create a unique design. That design is going to encompass so many things in it that it's going to feel pretty chaotic at times and it'll all come together in the end. One of the main things you need to use in this design are going to be patterns. Patterns can come from doodles you create, things you find, like a circuit board. A pattern can create with some simple lines and just turning and changing them over time to create a full pattern. A pattern can also use a lot of contrast, especially background against foreground, to make things stick out and pop. You're also going to need a stencil. A stencil is going to drive the design for yours. Stencils can be found objects around your house like a hammer, a puzzle piece, letters, a mask, maple leaves, and so on. To put this puzzle together, you're just going to have to work ideas out. stencil can be several things. Things you print out or things you find. I'm going to use a cup. So I'm going to take my cup here and I'm going to outline it. One important thing I'm going to do is keep it moving and filling my space with it. Making sure to overlap and keep repeating my design around and around. And it's okay to let areas cut off on the edge of the paper. Similarly, you can put a couple of your stencil stencils away from the rest if you want some extra space. Now we're going to start beginning adding patterns here. So I'm going to use a pencil. I'm going to take this card because I don't have a ruler. That's going to give me a nice straight edge. I'm going to start with a classic checkerboard pattern. Now I suggest working in clusters, meaning that work one design against another. Now I'm just thinking I want to create something a little different. I, I thought of prison bars and then I think about lines, now I'm thinking about spaghetti kind of. In my mind I just thought of like fish scales. Working in clusters helps you see like what design would be good against something else. For example, if you have something really free-flowing free and organic, you might want to put it next to something more geometric so they really stand out from one another. I'm just drawing some circles here of different shot sizes and shapes. I don't know if I'm going to add more in there, maybe some smaller circles. And if I don't know if I'm done, I can just move on and come back to it later zigzags, curved lines, straight lines. When they go together, they create new things. I'm inspired by some leaves here, so I'll put that in there. Now, far be it for me to showing you everything I'm going to create, but this just gives you some some starters on how I began my design. Thought of old telephone cords when I did that one. This print I have here, I took a look at some patterns online and I got some ideas from there and I sourced that and it inspired me to create my own. Use any inspiration you can find. You might find that a zipper is interesting to look at. But you also might find that something from a piece of fashion, such as like a dress, gives you some ideas. I thought of lightning when I did that. I'm doing everything in pencil. That way, if I make a mistake, I can always erase and try again. Now, we're going to move on to ink. So I can use regular pens. I can use Sharpies, colored Sharpies. It's really up to you, uh, but I would suggest um, taking a piece of paper and putting it underneath your drawing so if your ink bleeds through, it won't get onto other paper. When you do move on to ink, Practice with the pen you're using. 
See if it bleeds if you work really slow with it. For example, Sharpies tend to bleed a little bit on paper um, in pool if you work too slow. So I tend to work faster with my Sharpies compared to a regular ink pen. I'm outlining everything in ink now that I have in pencil. That way I'm going to be able to control how I want my design to come out. I like to turn my paper when working to make it as comfortable for me as possible. There's my card again using that as a straight edge. Also, if I'm not sure what I'm going to do with ink, I might shade or cut fill in with pencil first to test and then if that looks good, then I'll fill in with ink. When I'm filling in squares like this, I like to outline them with the ink pen first and then fill. Sometimes I feel like if I just start filling, I might make a lot of mistakes. We're going to talk about mistakes and modifications in a second because they will happen. Instant contrast, black against white. It's classic and it works for a reason. It has a lot of pop to it. Now make sure to really pace yourself and focus when you're working. When you're working with ink, you know, mistakes can really jump out if you work too fast in an area where you need to add a little more focus. So work at a smart pace that's going to give you the best results, especially with craftsmanship. I'm outlining the circles I overlapped because I thought that would break up the space well. What I'm doing now is I'm filling in the negative space or those spaces between those lines I created in that design so I can make those white little lines pop. It reminds me of noodles or something tangled now. I'm bringing in a thicker sharpie to add some dark underlines to really make some three-dimensional pop there. One good step to do is after you've done a lot of ink work, use a pen, uh, pencil eraser uh, to erase away any loose pencil lines that um, don't bring out the brightness of the paper. Some modifications I did here was I'm actually erasing away some of my circle lines when they intersected. This is something I did spontaneously. I just thought it would look really cool instead of having all my circle lines. Speaking of mistakes, I made a mistake right there when I was outlining. So I'm going to run with it. I'm going to create a design that hides the mistake. So if that happens to you, do it. Now a few hours later, here's my drawing. Can you see the Death Star in there? Or the TIE Fighter? You can hide little gems in there for people to find. It's a lot of fun. Some options for your final work is if you want to add color, um, that's a great thing to do. You might want to add color in some areas like this and leave some areas black and white. In this one, the central images are in color and the outer areas black and white. Good luck, everybody.